Hey everybody, this is Joe from the F-Stops here. Capture 123 dropped today. We have it. Um, I've been using it now uh, all morning and we're going to, in this video, go through all of the updates in Capture One version 23. Uh, there are some okay features, there's some good features, and there's at least one in particular really nice editing feature. So we're gonna enjoy those. A couple weeks ago, I made a video responding to the most recent update from Lightroom, Lightroom 12, which added the ability to just, in the masking section, click on a person. And if you've clicked on a person, be able to mask the eye, or the sclera, or the lips, or the hair, or just the skin of the face. Unbelievably good AI masking. And I said in that video that while I believe and I still do believe that Capture One has more capacity in editing a masked area, particularly with color, than Lightroom does. You have to mask the area first, and masking is just flat out easier in Lightroom, especially with Lightroom 12. And we did not get an additional AI masking tool from Capture 123. We didn't get it. Um, so they did not address my key concern with Capture One. That is a real shame. Um, so we have a divergent path happening here. We have more editing capacities and really great batch editing and batch calling capacities with Capture One 23. And it is just better at editing masked areas. But you have to mask the area first and masking Subjects, sky, parts of subjects is worlds easier in Lightroom. They are, they are really getting divergent. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into what we did get from Capture One 23. So our interface for Capture One version 23 looks the same as Capture One version 22. And if you update your catalog, it will just maintain your original workspace and that's what we pretty much expect. There are a few major changes uh, to Capture One. Uh, some I am more excited about than others, but let's take a look at them because there's some good stuff here and some disappointing stuff here. Uh, I have my library view up right now. And the first thing we're gonna look at is this idea of smart adjustments. Now, these were in particular made for uh, shoots having to do with people, right? And the idea being, well, we could copy edits forever in Capture One with the copy and apply tool, but that assumes that the nature of the adjustments would need to be the same. The exposure from shot to shot would need to be the same. The color uh, adjustment would need to be the same. Rather than having a target of exposure and color that we need to hit, which might imply different edits. So this tool was made with the uh, portraiture and wedding photographer in mind, but the idea being we should be able to take images of the same person in different environments, and we should theoretically be able to copy a set of adjustments and then use that as a target for future adjustments. Let me show you what I'm on about here. So let's grab uh, an image. Let's go ahead and grab this one here. And we want to take this image and we want to edit it. We want the exposure of the subject, the color of the subject to be pretty much what we're going for. I'm gonna do a fast edit here, maybe bring up some shadows. Uh, on him, I might take down my, ex no, not that much, maybe pull my exposure to about there. I might take my white balance and make it uh, a little bit warmer and say, okay, I like that. That's a, that's a nice edit. Okay, so then inside of, and here's a little thing, uh, there's a new tool called the Smart Adjustments tool. I'm gonna open it up so that you can see it. This is it right here. Now, if you use the default workspace, this is put into the Adjustments tab, but if you uh, Im import in or just adjust your old catalog, then your tool tabs will be the same. So I had to add mine back in. If you wanna know how to do that, we come to the Tool tab, we right click, Add Tool, and we go to Smart Adjustments. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set 
this image as a reference and it's held right now as a reference okay and i'm going to pop this tool back i uh, into here and just leave that up top uh, for the moment and so now i want to find another image so this is the same subject but i'm gonna i'm gonna ask quite a bit out of this software because i want this is the same subject but now he's inside it's different lighting conditions he's exposed differently but i want these two images to look similar to each other all right so when i set the reference as we can see i'll pop it back out just to be able to take a look at um i have set the reference and i have am using the white balance and the exposure and that you'll notice is the entirety of the frame there is the normalize tool which we've had for a little bit now in capture one which normalizes the skin tone of a particular picked area and this is not picking a specific area this is the entirety of the frame and so we might see slight variations it's not supposed to look identical they're supposed to look referential to each other and so i could uncheck if i didn't want to use one of these but i'm going to just apply it to the selected image or images and in this way you should be able to edit one image and then paste a selection of images on uh, a selection uh that edit to a selection of images um, that were shot in different environments, provided that they should all look the same. So I'm going to go ahead and apply it. And we'll see that the white balance changed and the exposure slightly changed. And I'm going to pull up the original image for reference. Now, please note, we didn't pick the subject, right? Um, we, like we did in the normalize tool. But these two, the skin tone's looking pretty similar. The exposure is looking pretty similar. We have a different amount of shadowing on the face, of course, so there's latitude here. But that's the idea, that I should be able to grab an edit and be able to use it and get a consistent result throughout a shoot. Now, one nice thing here is I can save it as a style. So Capture One is really leaning into the styles portion of the software. All right, so I could save this with the white balance, the exposure, and the camera profile. Those are the three edits that were done. Um, and then I would be able to uh, save this as uh, a style that way I'd be able to use later on. So, you know, we might say my son's name is Nathan, so he might say um, Nathan Skin Tone right and save this in styles which is pretty cool so if I were to come up to this other image and I'm not going to use the smart adjustment now I'm going to come over to my styles tool tab go to styles and presets and now I can come to custom styles and Nathan skin tone and I could just utilize that same adjustment and that's the idea behind the new Smart Adjustments tool. This should make editing faster. I, I like this. I think that this is going to be a very useful feature because I come back and forth. The nice thing is it's not trying to make this perfectly identical and skewing the image. It's making them similar and feel right so that they, if these were printed along with this image here and hung on a wall next to each other, it would feel like one collection. So this is a pretty useful feature. I think that uh, I'm going to really like this. Okay, so our second uh, uh, new feature with Capture One version 23 is called Culling. And this is actually seeming to be referenced off of uh, an ability that we've had in Lightroom for a little while now, the ability to start clumping images together based on similarity, and that allows you to scroll through them faster. Uh, so let's actually take a look at it. It's a whole new box right up here, just says cull. And the idea is that you can cull through images within a collection. So be careful where you're clicked inside of here because uh, it will start culling off of those. So I'm going to be inside of, let's go ahead and cull the images inside of my Hilton Head Island folder. And I'm going to take a look at my filters and I'm going to turn off all filtering. So all the images should be inside of here. All right. And now that 638 images are selected to be used, I'm going to come up to cull at the top and just click on the cull. Now this is a viewing mode effectively. And so we're going to pull this up and 
here's the view that we get of all of these. Now we can do a grid view or we can do an individual viewer. And here's what's kind of interesting. When we take a look at these, a grouping is gonna be right here and it says how many images are in this particular grouping. And that's based on similarities. And we can take the similarity slider and we can move it. And when we do so, we're saying how similar the images need to be in order to be clumped together. So I've got, uh, I've got uh, one image by itself here, I've got 21, I've got 48. And when we're inside of a particular group, so let's click on this group, all the images show up here. And now I can start going through, if I wanna find an individual image and I have an idea of what it looks like, I can go through and say, all right, I wanna find that image from the beach side and oh look it's probably going to be before this event it's probably going to be one of these ones here i can continue to look through the images based on the filtering here which is the same filter we've had forever so we can look specifically only at five stars or things that are color tagged in specific ways and be able to go through so i can start to find the images that i really want uh, very quickly. If you're going through uh, collections that have a lot of variety and a lot of uh, just a lot of images, this just might be a faster way for you to be able to find images. Now, I'm using a whole lot of uh, naming and star ratings to be able to find images. So I think time's going to tell uh, to depend on how much I'm using this new feature personally, uh, but it might be a way that I start looking through and finding specific things. So it might be useful for me. Um, we will see, um, we'll see how much this can speed up the process. But if we come to the grid viewer, uh, it's able to take 638 images and it's narrowed them down into this group. And I can scroll through a grid view in order to f try to find an individual image probably faster uh, than I might otherwise be able to do. So anyway, that is the new culling feature. Okay, so this next feature is going to be one that falls into the category of things I didn't know I really wanted until I saw that it was available. Um, and this, the, the example that Capture One gives for when this is really useful is if you're shooting an event with multiple cameras and the clocks aren't really synced to each other, then when you load these images into a collection and you organize them by date, so by the time that they were shot, they might be out of sequential order. And yeah, that definitely happens for some shooters some of the time. But there's another benefit to what they call the change capture time feature. Uh, and that is, what if you're using a camera and the date and time just aren't set? Uh, sometimes I am borrowing cameras. Sometimes, you know, you might rent a camera, borrow a friend's camera, something like that. And what if the date and time aren't set? You can change capture time. So my son was born in 2016, but I have shot pictures, you'll notice, from 2015 here under the folder of images of him. What the heck's going on? Well, these were shot uh, with a camera that, a camera or cameras that I borrowed and they, uh, the date and time just weren't set, right? And so these show up totally at the wrong time, okay? Now, there's not really been a great way to deal with this problem before. We've just kind of had them show up under the wrong date and you just have to kind of maybe keyword them in a specific way so that you can find them. Uh, but uh, we can now change the capture time. So I can select them, right click, and I can come to change capture time. And this is going to allow me to change this. This is, this is actually really useful. So it's saying, all right, here is the date it thought that it was, and this is absolutely just not true. So um, for me to fix uh, an image from years ago, I might have to guess, but I at least want to get the date correct. And I am quite certain 
that these were shot somewhere around October of 2017, not 2015. Uh, and so I'm going to just change that. Now you'll notice there is a date uh, stamp and a time stamp and saying, hey, we're gonna change this by two years, eight months, one hour, etc." So I can hit update and that's great. But here's what's nice. Because there is a date alteration and a time alteration by, I can, I can batch uh, edit this, right? I can take a sequence of images that I know these were all shot the same day, it's just that the date is wrong. So I can take this sequence, and let's just go ahead and try to find the end here. And there's another sequence of images that was wrong, but we're gonna go ahead and select there. Right click, change capture time. And we had said October of, oops, 2017 and it's going to maintain whatever the time is because I'm not altering that hit update all and so these are going to drop out of my auto populating uh, filter here because I filtered for 2015 so I'll know when it finishes filtering these effectively so I actually see a couple different usages for the change capture time feature I think this is really nice uh, this is a useful feature. Thank you, Capture One. I didn't know that I would really want to be able to fix this until I, I can fix it. By the way, a little note, this is not changing the actual metadata of your raw file. It is creating a sidecar file and uh, then it is referencing it, meaning that uh, you're not changing your original image, but that also means that this alteration of the date and time stamp will not show up in other softwares. Just a little extra note. All right, moving on. Uh, it's not the last feature, but it's the, I would consider it the last major feature, and that's being able to do more with styles inside of layers, which was always a little restricted before. So there's a couple steps to this, which is pretty cool. Uh, I've got a landscape image pulled up here. And let's say that I want to apply a style. If I come down to one of these, this is a built-in style just called landscape, I can right click, and now I can apply it as a new layer. So if I come over to my layers panel, it's right here. And that allows me just to begin to apply it. That's really cool, very useful. And now there's something additional that I can do with that as well. So what if I want to be able to bring in this style regularly in the future, but I want its opacity to be lower, let's say about 51% opacity of the effect as a new layer. That can be done, so check this out. We can come back over, we do have to go back to the styles and presets tool, little note. We can't do this and have it work from the layers panel. We have to come back over to styles and presets. And what I can do is come over to these little dots and save a custom style. And here it's applying the landscape uh, um, style as a new style, right? And we're gonna save this as test landscape or save it whatever you want. This is just gonna be our purposes. And that was done at the landscape style at 51% opacity. I'm gonna come over to another image. There's nothing done to it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come here instead of built-in styles to my custom styles, test landscape now exists. And I'm gonna right click and I'm going to apply. And when I come over here, it is applied now as its own layer at 51% opacity. So if you regularly want to build in effects like this at lower opacity values, you can do so. Uh, so not hard to be able to use. Um, I think there are a lot of people using styles uh, pretty extensively, and this is certainly a helpful feature for those customers. Okay, so there are two more features that I'm just going to mention. I'm not going to demo them uh, because it's, it's pretty straightforward. The first one is that when you create multiple variants of an image, 
they can now be moved into individual uh, collections. So a black and white treatment can be in one collection, an original can be in another collection. Uh, they used to be grouped together and this is no longer the case. So if you have an image and you want to take this and you want to uh, make a new variant uh, of it, those two images can now be moved to different locations. So no problem there. Uh, and the last one is that Capture One Live has now a slightly trimmed down free version uh, for everybody with uh, Capture One 23. Uh, one day I might do a video talking about Capture One Live uh, as a collaboration tool, uh, but that's the other feature. Thanks for joining me today as we take a look at Capture 123. Uh, I think that there are some particularly nice features inside of this update. I like what we got. There's nothing here that I dislike, though I would say I never ran into the issue before of taking a variant and having an issue of putting one variant in one collection and another variant in another. I guess that did affect some people. Uh, so that's probably the weakest feature that we did get. The uh, capacity to uh, do referential editing is wonderful. The calling is gonna work really well. Um, of course, the big disappointment is we did not get AI masking. So is this enough for you? Is this a really nice set of features? Is this a lackluster set of features? Uh, I'd love to hear what you have to say. And until next time, take care.